Hi everyone, Dave and Alex from Corsa. It's like we do this professionally. Oh yeah. Bill, drinking my coffee for you, buddy. And CH Distillery Fernet. Cheers. Okay, so we're coming at you guys live, not live, we're coming at you guys from a pre-taped, slightly recorded, heavily edited video from the Corso Cottage. Mm -hmm. Chicago, Corso Cottage, Chicago, yep. CCC. Yep. I like it. And we're here to talk about something awesome <clears throat> that we've been playing around with a lot, and that is Ignition 8.0 slash Perspective Module. Mm -hmm. Alex and I were both at ICC. Um, we were there for like the 8.0 unveiling. We were one of the first 800-ish who downloaded the Perspective um, app, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And we have since had a bunch more conversations and uh, gotten the beta and done a bunch of other stuff. And Alex wrote a couple of amazing blog posts mm -hmm. that hopefully you read. And we just kind of wanted to come in a different format and let you guys know where we're at on 8.0 and Perspective and show you a little bit of the app. If our video editor can, can figure out how to do that, mm -hmm. he's questionable sometimes. And yeah, but Alex, you are the product expert. Yeah, so first the Ignition 8. They made some changes to the install process that makes what was already pretty painless, even less painless. Like I could even figure it out? Mm -hmm. That would be really painless. Uh, and they kind of walk you through a few things that you we always do when we install a gateway for the first time, like set up devices, database connections, mm -hmm. set the port so you don't have to now, before you had to open the gateway control utility, change the port, restart the gateway. And it, it wasn't bad, it just took a few minutes to mm -hmm. do. Now you just do it before the gateway even starts up officially. It was just a pleasant, like, it's kind of like when you open an Apple device and the packaging is really nice and it like presents everything well. And Amazing packaging. Mm -hmm. it, it packaged Ignition as if Apple were to do the packaging for it. It was, it was nice. Good. It was a something I wasn't even thinking about wanting and there it was and it was like, wow. It's, it's like Apple. Yeah. Like you don't think you want it and then you open your first Apple device and yeah. you're like, why doesn't everyone else do this? Yeah. So that was really cool, and that's just an eight change for it. That's not perspective related mm -hmm. at all. Uh, then we got perspective up and running with the beta, mm -hmm. and there is some documentation. Yeah. Um, because it is quite different. It's the same designer. I mean, there's just a perspective item in the tree that you mm -hmm. expand, just like Windows and, and all that. So it's familiar, but different. Yeah. Instead of dealing with uh, the different style properties like we were dealing with yeah. in the windows and the components before, it's now all CSS based. Mm -hmm. So you can set anything you would set in a CSS property like your width, height, color, borders, all that kind of stuff you can set in perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also set up CSS classes. So for like a global, if something is active or inactive or enabled or disabled or whatever you want to set up, yeah. you can set up CSS classes there's a ton of additional scripting options on the components beyond the dozen or so that they had before. There's now a whole okay. list of different things you can pick from. And then you can configure, uh, so those are called events, where you can configure scripts that will execute things. Then there's also the message handling bus or system, whatever you want to call it. I think it's, a, I would call it a message handling bus. Okay that basically runs in the background of your client and allows components to talk to one another. So in a typical vision window, you would click a button and if you wanted, to, let's say you wanted to turn on a, a motor, mm -hmm. you would set your tags and all that. And then well, that's a bad example. <laughs> we'll cut that out. So let's say you wanted to, to load a database table with data okay. when you click a button. Normally you would say, Click the button, then do, you know, root container dot table dot data refresh or whatever, and update the table. Here you could say, when you click the button, I want to call the update SQL data message. Okay. And then on the table, you would configure an update SQL data message handler. Okay. And that will listen for anything that calls that message handler. So you could have 50 different buttons mm -hmm. and passing different parameters to that. And then all you have to put on the button is just this function call, and then all the code 
for whatever you want to do on the table exists in the message handler on the table. Okay. So before we may have a, a screen where some of the components have code for themselves with custom methods. Some of the components have code that interact with other things on the screen. Okay. And depending on how you're developing it and what standards you have in place, it could get a little messy if you're not like, tracking that and yeah, managing yeah. things properly. So this allows you to set up a very structured thing. So it's like if, if this table's gonna have any actions done to it, you could have all of those actions defined on the table. Okay. And then have everything else interact with those actions. So you don't have to go digging around in 20 different places to Sweet. find okay, I click this button and something happens. Where, where does it happen? It's, mm -hmm. It all happens on this component and we're calling message handlers. Okay. So, like, just as what I'm understanding from what you're saying, mm -hmm. is it takes everything that we love about Ignition, 7.9.9 mm -hmm. point, point whatever, and kind of everything that we love about Ignition, mm -hmm. and it fixes a bunch of issues or makes some tweaks of things that we wanted Mm -hmm. And then it tells us, oh, it gives us a bunch of stuff that we never thought of, but is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And it just packages it so much nicer that it, from like the SI or like a person implementing it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot better and mm -hmm. it's a lot smoother and it's a lot quicker. And it helps people who have the development background, as most of the people at Corso do, and more and more of the people that we're seeing getting into the industry have. Mm -hmm. It helps them because it allows them to speak in their native language, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then one of the other cool things, they have um, binding previews. You can, before you bind something to another component, you can kind of get a feel for what it's going to do. You can also, this is totally a web-based change that's now capable. You can pass parameters as URL parameters into your, when you open it up in a browser, mm -hmm. you are going to like, and it'll load that particular page. You could pass in, and like work order ID equals X, Y, Z, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then all your parameter or all your components on the window are tied to your parameter from the URL and it'll pull up all your info. So you could take a, a link from your ERP system that points to your perspective mm -hmm. module, pass in a URL parameter from your ERP link and load everything up in a perspective page. It's really cool. And we kind of go through some of that in our blog posts. Yeah. Our, as we play with it more and we learn more about it mm -hmm. and the beta is capable of more things. Yeah. We're expanding on that and do as much as we can with it and figure out where it breaks and if we could develop an entire production system in perspective once it's available. It's not mm -hmm. ready for that at the moment. Uh, but once it is available and out of beta, I think that would be a, that's kind of where I see the, the industry going, assuming that it does everything that it's capable of, of doing and does that well. Yeah. Okay. And then, because you get the built-in mobile version of things without having to move from vision screens to perspective screens, mm -hmm. like you would if we were to move from a current installation to a perspective. Please stay tuned for our Ignition 8 slash perspective, like, follow-ups. I would imagine we'll have one, at least one, before between now and when it officially launches. And then as we continue to build more things on it, and we're in the process of developing an application that you guys will have to check back for to watch, uh, but we're in the process of developing an app on the beta to use internally and to kind of see what breaks and see what happens. And when we get the thumbs up that we can show that to you, we will definitely show it to you guys. So Dave and Alex from Corso, hope you guys liked our kind of walkthrough and everything that we've told you about 8.0. And perspective. Um, and like, we do a walkthrough of everything kind of that we just talked about in our blog post. So if you want to yeah, actually yeah. see screenshots. Uh, but yeah, uh, like, like, comment, subscribe, shoot us some emails or give us a phone call if you have questions about what we're doing and how it'll affect you guys in the future. Until then, we'll talk to you guys soon. Smash that like button. Do you have to like smash the likes? You know, oh my god, you know what we need? We literally need a massive like button on this super blank wall, and then someone could just come jumping across our massively large sofa and just like high five it. We may be getting into the weeds a little bit. Yeah. Like normal.
this is why you guys watch our videos. So we don't have ads enabled though, so no, we should. <laughs> so this is a completely non-sponsored video, but if you would like to sponsor us, we would happily talk to you. Yep. Is that a level above trolling getting a sponsor? It's like Alton Brown always says on his podcast. He's like, they don't pay me to say this, but they could. They could, and you should.